JBN, we keep you informed. District Constable robbed in halfway tree. The police are searching for criminals who attacked a wheelchair-bound man and stole a large sum of money from him in halfway tree St. Andrew on Thursday. Reports are that about 1 p.m., the man said to be a district constable went to a major financial institution in the commercial hub to conduct business. The man reportedly left the financial institution sometime after with a large sum of money. According to information received, as soon as he exited the institution, he was approached by a man who attacked him and snatched a bag that he was carrying with money. Reports are that the man who was robbed then pulled a firearm and fired at the fleeing culprit. The shooting sent people in the busy area running for cover. The halfway tree police have since launched a search for the attacker. Taxi operator among two shot dead in Old Arbor. The St. Catherine Salt Police have launched a probe into the double murder of two men in Old Arbor on Wednesday night. The deceased men have been identified as 43-year-old Melbourne Thomas of Maple and Carindon and 41-year-old taxi operator Anthony Daly. Police reports are that between 7.25 p.m. and 10 p.m., loud explosions were heard along the P.J. Patterson leg of Highway 2000 in the vicinity of the Old Arbor Fire Station. The police were summoned, and on their arrival, Thomas and Daly were found suffering from gunshot wounds. They were taken to the hospital where they were pronounced dead. Investigations are ongoing. Police monitoring Arborview amid flare-up of violence. The police are keeping a close watch on sections of Arborview, following a flare-up of violence since last week. Two men were shot, one fatally, along Luna Drive on Wednesday. The deceased has not been identified. The second victim, a 33-year-old construction worker, has been hospitalized. Investigators say the killing stemmed from a dispute which was reported to the Arborview Police Station on Tuesday. It is reported that a man known as Quelo went to the area to collect rent when he was approached by two men in the Melbrook area who opened gunfire on him and his brother. The two men fled. The cops say since the shooting, there have been reprisal attacks in the area. Another Era 1 cop charged for sex with minor. A St. James District constable who is accused of raping a 13-year-old girl was slapped with criminal charges on Tuesday following a ruling by the Director of Public Prosecutions, DPP. The accused, 35-year-old Cleveland Heaven, a farmite in St. James, is the second police officer in the Area 1 region to be charged with rape within the past month. He surrendered to the police on Tuesday on two arrest warrants for grievous sexual assault and rape. Reports are that the 13-year-old victim is a friend of one of the cop's relatives with whom he built a relationship through social media. The two reportedly met in downtown Montego Bay where he picked her up and drove to a section of Kent Avenue where he allegedly held her down and raped her. The matter was reported to the police and the child was taken to the Type 5 clinic in Montego Bay where it was confirmed that she had been sexually molested. A file was then prepared and sent to the DPP who ruled that heaven should be charged. Prior to that incident, 22-year-old Constable Akil Maxwell who was stationed at the Anova Police Headquarters, was also charged with raping a 15-year-old girl while she was being held at the Lucy Headquarters. Maxwell was granted bail in the sum of $1 million when he appeared in court on July 9 and was ordered to surrender his travel documents and to report to the Anchovy Police Station three times per week. He is to return to court on September 24. Reports are that on June 20, the 15-year-old was being held in the holding area at the Lucy Police Headquarters when Maxwell allegedly went inside the holding area and forcibly had sex with her. The matter was reported to other officers at the station and the constable was taken into custody. Following a ruling from the DPP, he was later charged. Elderly man dies in Trelawney House fire. An elderly man was burnt to death in a fire that gutted his home in Trelawney on Wednesday morning. The deceased has been identified as 89-year-old Telafios Bulgin of Hastings District in the Deeside community. According to police reports, about 8.30 a.m., relatives saw fire coming from the house where Bulgin lived with his wife and summoned the fire brigade and the police. Upon arrival of a unit from the Falmouth Fire Station, a cooling down operation was conducted and the charred remains of Bulgin was found in the house. His wife escaped the blaze. Personnel from the Falmouth Fire Station are investigating to establish the cause of the fire. Luck runs out on Conman, 
who pleads guilty to 10 fraud cases and still have another 30 before the court. A Trelawney con man who reportedly duped several residents out of cash totaling more than $5 million has been charged with more than 30 counts of obtaining money by means of false pretense. The accused, identified as 50-year-old Leon Williams of Rocks District, also in Trelawney, pleaded guilty to 10 counts when he appeared before the Trelawney Parish Court recently. While in court, the investigators presented the court with several other cases bringing additional charges against him. He was ordered to return to court on August 13, where he will be sentenced on the incidents to which he pleaded guilty. He was also remanded into custody on the latest set of charges and will also answer to those on the same date. The Chiloni police reported that Williams conned more than 30 persons, some of whom he convinced that he could get jobs for them in the U.S. But most of the charges against him came from persons who reported that he led them to believe that he was in a terrible accident and needed assistance to do an operation. Investigators stated that Williams conned an elderly female out for more than $2 million after she decided to assist him to pay for the operation. The victim's husband discovered what was taking place and made a report to the police. Following an investigation, Williams was taken into custody and charged. Detective Inspector Simeon Hamilton, officer in charge of crime for Trelawney, commended the lawmen for bringing Williams to justice. The officers must be commended for their hard work to bring this con man to justice. So far, he has pleaded guilty to a number of the charges and is to return to court for sentencing, he said. But the investigators still have their hands full as each day more and more victims keep turning up at the station and filing additional charges against them. So I can confirm that when he appears in court next Tuesday, he'll be slapped with more fraud charges, Hamilton said. Sean Paul among 100 Jamaicans to receive national honors on Heroes Day. Dancehall entertainer Sean Paul is among more than 100 Jamaicans conferred with national honors and awards. The recipients will be formally recognized at a ceremony on National Heroes Day, October 21. Sean Paul, whose given name is Sean Enriquez, has been conferred with the Order of Distinction in the rank of Commander for his contribution to the global popularity and promotion of reggae music. National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang is also the recipient of the Order of Distinction in the rank of Commander for public service in the area of politics. Other recipients include Dr. D.K. Duncan and Dr. Andre Franklin for service to the Electoral Commission of Jamaica. Christopher Daring for contribution to banking and finance, telecommunications and sports marketing, and the CEO of the National Environment and Planning Agency, Peter Knight, for his contribution to the health sector and environmental planning. Julius Garvey, son of Jamaica's first national hero, Marcus Garvey, has been appointed to the Order of Jamaica for his contribution to universal civil activism and the promotion of entrepreneurship, as well as the legacy of Garveyism and Pan-Africanism. Rita Marley has been appointed to the Order of Jamaica for her contribution to the popularization of Jamaican music and by extension brand Jamaica on the world stage and for humanitarian work through the Rita Marley Foundation. Other recipients of this honor are Mike Henry for 40 years of public service, political representation and public policy development and Robert Pickersgill for public service and political representation. Meanwhile, Tamar Blake, who raised an alarm when a woman tried to register baby snatch from the Victoria Jubilee Hospital in January, has been bestowed with a badge of honor for gallantry. The newborn was stolen from the hospital on January 9. 28-year-old Peter Gay French, who was caught when she attempted to register the baby as her own at the Registrar General's Department last month, pleaded guilty to child stealing. We want a legal publishing of wholeness assets, declared the PMP. The People's National Party PMP says that it will continue to push for the National Integrity Commission to publish and gazette the summary of the statutory declaration of assets and liabilities filed by Prime Minister Andrew Holness in accordance with the Integrity Act as its non-disclosure is a breach of the law which triggers mandatory sanctions. In a statement yesterday responding to comments by the Prime Minister that he may bypass the Commission and release his report, the PMP said that no one is above the law and therefore it expects the Integrity Commission to carry out its duty prescribed in law. It said disclosure by the Prime Minister is not the legal procedure, but rather a cleared declaration by the Integrity Commission. 
The law is clear on all these matters to be treated. The law applies to everyone. And the Prime Minister's releasing of this declaration without the clearance of the Integrity Commission will not satisfy the law. That would be nothing more than an attempt to circumvent the legal requirements, the PMP argued. The PMP said the Prime Minister needs to be aware that any such action by him will not deter the opposition from pursuing his proposed court action. The court order of mandamus that the opposition may have to seek is to compel the Integrity Commission to fulfill its obligations under the law. The Integrity Commission has cleared and accepted the declaration made by the leader of the opposition and to publish the summary. They have not done so for the Prime Minister, who says he has filed his declaration and expected the publication of his summary two weeks ago, the PMP said. They questioned whether the Integrity Commission is unable to publish owner's summary because they have not cleared and accepted his declaration. That is the issue the Prime Minister must address, the PMP said. While we agree that the Integrity Commission is a relatively new institution, this is not the kind of matter that would be new to the commissioners and the professionals employed by the commission, the party added. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.